Waiter Wallet. We make even the best waiters better. Thank you for uh, purchasing the Waiter Wallet, the ultimate organizational tool for servers. Uh, the purpose of this video is to provide you with all the information necessary to make the Waiter Wallet as effective and successful as possible in your restaurant. Uh, while this is not brain surgery by any means, uh, like any tool, knowing its best uses and practices will dramatically increase its performance. Uh, and to help me help you uh, understand the way to law, I've invited Tim Kirkland, uh, best-selling author of the Renegade Server and Restaurant Guru, guru to join us and, uh, and give us the benefit of his knowledge and expertise. Tim, thanks for joining us. John, thanks for having me. You know, when I first saw the waiter wallet, I was so impressed by its effectiveness in increasing organization, uh, sales capability, uh, all of the benefits that it has for a waiter. I just can't believe nobody had thought of it before. <laughs> you know, we hear that all the time, and it, it feels good every time we hear it. It's, it's amazing to me that when you consider how much expense, thought, that goes into opening and operating a restaurant, that when it comes to server functionality and organization, which is left to their own devices, and, and typically that means grabbing a check presenter and shoving everything they're challenged to carry inside, which not only looks unprofessional, but it's it's dysfunctional and it's it's dangerous. I mean, check presenters are great for presenting checks, but this is a terrible way to keep track of things that are as important as your guest orders, your cash, and credit cards. Absolutely, absolutely, and and like you said, I mean, designed for presenting checks, not designed for taking orders and organizing waiters, and that's what the waiter wallet does and does so well. So before we get into the features, I want to sort of go over the different versions of the waiter wallet and I will go from there. To my far right is the waiter wallet junior, our smallest waiter wallet, which is perfect for waiters who don't have the benefit of an apron pocket. This tucks away into a breast pocket or a pant pocket and yet has the same functionality and features as the other versions of the waiter wallet. Uh, next is our waiter wallet senior, our largest format waiter wallet, increased capacity and perfect for restaurants and waiters that use a larger order pad. Uh, next is our waiter wallet LTO, which is sized identical to the original waiter wallet, our most popular, but yet features a clear front pocket, uh, perfect for positioning a limited time offer or some promotion that you want to expose to guests. Uh, and then as I mentioned, our original waiter wallet. Uh, sized identical to the LTO and has all the same functionality but tucks away in the apron so it actually doesn't stick out above the, the apron pocket but comes right to that line so it's a much cleaner more professional uh, line. Uh, with that said let's let's go over the way to wallet and, and some of its key uh, functionality. Uh, first of all when you first open up the way to wallet you notice its orientation is different from a check presenter. A check presenter opens up like a book which again great for presenting checks but not great for writing and taking orders. Uh, this is a much more professional system and organization uh, of, of the server. Uh, not only does it position the pad firm writing surface, but it places our clear pocket right before the server. So invaluable information is right now at a server's fingertips, when and where it counts, on the floor, every shift, every time an order is taken. Jonathan, I mean, just by nature, if I'm using a, a check presenter to write down my orders, if it's going to be flat so that I can write on it, if it's horizontal, I'm basically displaying all of this to my table. And P.S. Is there anything less sanitary than American currency? <laughs> Dirty is not the message you want going out to your guests. Right, right. If you're going to use notes, let them be subtle and, and not seeing, you know, you, you're reading them off your, your check presenter. Here it's just, it's really natural. You're, you're looking at it and uh, it really effective. Uh, regarding that, uh, the proper way to hold a waiter wallet. Again, not rock si rocket science, but there are a couple of key points I'd like to make. First of all, never, ever, ever fold your waiter wallet over uh, like this. Not only does it cause premature wear of the waiter wallet because you're putting stress on the seams, but you're hiding your clear pocket from your vision and, and taking away its effectiveness. So what you want to do is simply grab the waiter wallet, use your pinky, ring finger and middle finger to support the, the way to wallet and use your, your, your index finger and your thumb to, to keep the uh, top of the way to wallet vertical and facing you. Um, let's, let's talk about these, these clear pockets which are a key attribute uh, and training component of the way to wallet. Uh, it places invaluable information at a service fingertips and, and to that end we've created a number of free templates that are available on our website. Nine templates in total. Wine pairing, beer pairing, allergies. There's even one where you can de design your own content, whether it's a floor plan or 
other things that you want to feature to your servers. You know, John, this is the thing that made me fall in love with the Waiter Wallet is the server-facing panel because it can be used for so many things that can increase uh, the effectiveness of every single server. I mean, obviously the most basic being what are your specials. And if I, if I never see another server come up with the specials really speedily jotted down on a, on a piece of receipt paper from the bar printer, uh, and, and reading off of that, it'll be too soon. This allows you to get the specials right. Not only that, but it can be written by your chef so that I'm, not, I'm listening to what the specials are and remembering what I'm going to say about it rather than hastily trying to keep up with the manager when they rattle it off during a shift meeting. Absolutely. I mean, how effective is it if uh, before the pre-shift, every server is handed a, a legible, professionally written with the key attributes that you want them to feature to your guests in their hands? So like as Tim said, at the pre-shift, they're focused and listening, and this is just reinforcing what they've already learned. It, it really a, a core, core value here. Uh, another template that, that I know you love, I, we, we love too, is our wine pairing template. Oh, I can't say enough about it. I, I don't think its value can be overstated. Uh, you know, the number one reason that we found, I speak to thousands of servers every year uh, as, as part of my work, and the number one reason that many servers don't sell wine is they don't feel comfortable selling it. They don't feel comfortable with the language. They're not confident in their pairings. Uh, the wine pairing templates that you've got, I think, take all the guesswork and all the un discomfort out of that transaction. And by the way, servers, you want to make more money, learn to sell wine. If I can drop a $40 bottle of wine on a table, that's an additional six to eight bucks for me. It's like having another guest at the table. Absolutely. Another great tip, if, if one more guest at the table order that same glass of wine, it's a great opportunity to suggest a bottle. Yeah. And, and increase your sales. And we've got a template for bottles of wine that uh, allow you to, to, to list three wines for each category. So Cabernet, Chardonnay, sure. and you put a low, medium, and high price bottle of wine in each of those categories with a tasting note. Now you're a wine expert and you have invaluable information that can guide your guests and increase your sales. Absolutely. You know, the wine pairing and beer pairing for that matter, this, this is a blade that cuts going both ways. Because now, not only can I recommend a wine to you based on what you just ordered as an entree, if I come up and see that you've had, you have a glass of wine on the table as your pre-dinner drink, I can recommend a great entree that'll go with that wine. This goes both ways. You already have a glass of Zenfidel, I can recommend our you know, terrific barbecue combination to go on the table. Absolutely. And I know you actually reimagined your book to work with the Waiter Wallet. I did. You know, we, we were so excited about the, the server-facing panel that we, we reimagined the Renegade server into a deck of 52 full-color cards that each one, each one displays a, a significant tip-exploding uh, idea. And these are all designed to perfectly slide into the server-facing panels of the Waiter Wallet. Right. So it's like the greatest tips from Tim's book that not only put invaluable information in the service fingertips, but it, what is the biggest challenge of a manager at pre-shift to, to come up with topics to talk about? Now you've got 52 to, to introduce in every pre-shift. Every pre oh my and gosh. As a, as, a, as a manager, my, a restaurant manager myself, I'd spend the 20 minutes before the shift began panicking about what I was going to do during pre-shift. Sadly, what that means for some managers is they end up talking about things that don't have anything to do with selling on the floor or getting people excited about the product or the special, whatever it is. It ends up being, here's the special, and now I want to talk about things that went wrong the last shift. You know, Instead, you can dole out one of 52 cards that are going to put the, the money in your server's pockets. And here's the secret about, the re about restaurant work. Managers, if you can teach your servers the ways to make more money, the restaurant makes more money. Successful servers make successful restaurants. Every single one of these tips that's designed to make more tips for servers is also necessarily beneficial to the restaurant because it increases sales, it increases guest satisfaction, loyalty, and frequency. Absolutely. And touching on something you said before, it, it, it's like a coach motivating their players before going into the big game. You don't want to tell them why they're not good. Uh, you want to inspire them and encourage them and get them in a good mood or optimize their performance. And, and, and that's what these, these tools can really help them do. It's an excellent point. The other thing coaches don't do, aside from just telling people what they're doing wrong, they don't just give vague goals to reach. In your pre-shift, if you're coaching by just going in, in, into the pre-game rally and your coaching sounds like this, you should score more points. That's not effective. <laughs> what coaches good, are good at doing is changing players' behaviors. Incrementally, one behavior at a time. This puts specific behaviors in front of the server at the moment of need and the moment of impact. Absolutely. And, and something we've heard over and over again with these great templates and this great resource to put invaluable information at server's fingertips is 
well, there's only one clear pocket. I mean, we need more. Well, we, we've got you covered. We, we came up with a product, which is our clear pocket insert. I don't know if you're implementing this. This is something that can be easily added later on. Basically, it just slips behind the pad and then flaps over the pad. And now, rather than just having one clear pocket, your servers have three pieces of information at their fingertips to help them sell and guide them more. So maybe specials, wine pairing, and allergies, or whatever combination, or if certain servers are very, very uh, proficient in one area and not in another, you can help have different resources available for, for different servers. I do recommend restaurants coming up and revisiting their training manual and coming up with core concepts to reintroduce. Oh, absolutely. You know, any great trainer or manager knows that people learn differently today than they did 20 years ago. Uh, 20 years ago, it was good enough just to hand a three-ring binder to your trainee and expect that they would learn and memorize everything in it. But once that training is finished, where does that binder end up? You know, in their closet, their trunk of their car, never to be seen again. Great training should be customized to the way that people learn today. And the way that we learn today, the way that I get most of my information is in short, memorable, digestible blasts, typically on the screen of my smartphone. What I recommend is if you want your culture and your training to extend past the three-ring binder and onto the floor and really live on the floor of your restaurant, break it into moments and put it into the waiter wallet so that there are reminders every day of a key piece of your culture or a key important piece of your training. Absolutely. We even have uh, one template that uh, at the top of it, it's a pl there's a place for tip of the day. Great place to reintroduce these core concepts that, that you, you, you draw from your training manual and, and reinforce with your staff. Yeah, John, I always ask this. If, if every time you got in the car to drive down the street, if the person who taught you how to drive was sitting in the passenger seat every time, would it change how you drive? It would drive me crazy. Probably my mother and <laughs> wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, so moving on uh, with the waiter wallet, next, next key feature is our um, order pad. This is specifically designed for taking orders. So it's not a random scrap piece of paper. It's a formatted system to help waiters be more effective and more efficient at creating the orders and taking orders down properly without mistakes. And that's, that's, that's key. Oh my gosh, it's key. You know, visit any very highly successful high-end restaurant chain and they have custom pads for their servers because they understand the value of getting it right the first time every time. Nothing uh, can derail a restaurant's profits more than mistakes. And nothing causes mistakes more than not writing things down. You know, I know so many servers who pride themselves and think that guests are impressed when they don't take notes or don't write anything down and they do anything, everything by memory. It, nothing could be farther from the truth. When a server is at my table and we're six of us here and we all have special, we're all in the biz, so we all have special mods and requests and, and customizations for our food, and a server just tries to remember and nods, when they walk away, that table doesn't feel impressed. They feel unconfident. They don't feel like they're going to get their stuff right. I have never felt impressed when a server doesn't write things down. And to be honest, probably a third of the time, something's wrong anyway. So if you think that guests are impressed when you get it right by remembering, they're not impressed. They're relieved. Wouldn't it be great just to reinforce your guests' good experience, to give them that confidence by writing things down? Absolutely. And you know, you don't want to shift your guests' conversation from what they'd typically be talking about to, and this happens all the time, as soon as a waiter memorizes an order, as soon as they walk away, the first thing they're going to be talking about is, they're not going to get this right. They're going to get this wrong. And, and now you've changed their dining experience. The expectation is completely different now, oh, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, writing things down is going to save you time. You're not going to have to come back more than once for a dish. It's going to make sure everything gets entered right so that it's more likely to come out of the kitchen right. And managers, i, I got to tell you, if, if only one in, ten order, uh, one in ten orders is a mistake because it got remembered or entered or came out wrong, just one in ten that could kill the profit margin for the restaurant in general. That is terrifying. Absolutely. No, it's, uh, it's absolutely imperative. It's, it's at the core. And I think that if you memorize orders and something does come, wrong, come out wrong, it just amplifies the anxiety or anger of the guests because it reinforces what they already believe. That you should have written it down. You should have written it down. So uh, moving on, but actually before we move on, just a simple little thing. Uh, the, the way to position a pad into the way to wall, uh, when you remove the pad, you see there's two pockets. There's a smaller pocket at the bottom, a larger pocket at the top. Uh, if you position the way to wall pad in the bottom, it's going to flap down and not be securely held. So you always want to use the pad pocket, which is at the top, 
which securely holds the pad in place. Just a, a little tip there for, uh, for servers. Uh, moving on from there, we're getting to what really inspired the Waiter Wall is its core organizational components. If you look at the check presenter, uh, this is again how servers hold everything they're challenged to carry. If they're looking for something to, to read or a special, it's a cluttered mess. And other than that, the cash, everything is visible to the guests, as Tim had said earlier, it doesn't inspire confidence or professionalism. What we've done is reimagine this, and we've developed a really unique system that, that hides and securely holds everything servers are challenged to carry uh, in this interior pocket. So really, uh, cash and credit card receipts on either side of this divider, uh, we recommend putting the cash at the bottom of the pocket as, as far down as possible so it clears the fold. Uh, same with your credit card receipts. Uh, and it securely holds everything in place. And that divider, it also has four pockets to hold guest charge cards. So now when a guest asks you at the beginning of the meal, hey, make sure I pay for this meal, hold my card, make sure no one else pays, you've got a secure place to keep that card that you're not going to put in the pocket and, and God forbid misplace it, and that is a disaster. I'll tell you, John, I mean, every server out there knows that how many times do your hands go in and out of those pockets? I know that I know very few people who haven't suffered maybe losing all of their tips in a night because they dropped a 50 or or $100 bill uh, from going in and out of those pockets so much. And as an owner and operator of nightclubs and, uh, and restaurants, I, I'll tell you, the worst visit that I can make to a guest table is to approach and say, We've misplaced your credit card. Absolutely. Hey, well, you're going to end up copying the meal. Way to lose the tip. I mean, that's the worst feeling as a waiter. You, you know, you lost this thing and your heart just it sinks. Is. And you just frantically run around that Correct. restaurant like a crazy person. Absolutely. Uh, one tip regarding the, uh, these, these credit card pockets uh, and all of the pockets, there's another pocket in the back we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, if you place more than one card in any of these pockets, uh, you can uh, and likely will stretch out that pocket so it no longer will securely hold just one card. So we recommend uh, to, to just put that one card in there. If you really must, just know that you're probably going to stretch out that pocket. So uh, regarding that other pocket, we've got a great pocket. If you use a POS swipe card to access the computer, we've got a POS swipe card in the pocket that not only consistently holds your card in the same place, but it provides fast access. So you swipe, go, and it goes right inside that pocket. So now it's securely held in there, and you're not frantically searching at your slam, and you're looking for which pocket you put your, your POS swipe card in. You know where it is every time. And as much as you may think, oh, it's always in this pocket, inevitably during the shift you put it in a different pocket, and it, it becomes a... I can't tell you, during a busy shift as a manager, how many... POS swipe cards I can collect just by walking around all of the registers on the floor. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, and, and, and as a waiter, you, you know that feeling, you're frantically looking around and you're killing valuable time, and it's usually when you're most busy and it's, it's, it's a disaster. And not only that, we eliminate that, that, uh, that sort of janitor swipe thing, which, you know, isn't the most professional looking. <laughs> I think uh, the name says it all. Yeah, right? it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not the, the, the best practice in our, in our opinion. Uh, and then now, our, our, our last way to walk, which we want to talk, in, uh, talk to in a little bit of detail, is our, our, our clear pocket uh, LTO waiter wallet. And this is a really effective tool at positioning a premium upsell incremental sale to guests when and where it counts, before the guests, when they're hungry, when they're ordering, and really effective uh, tool. Absolutely. This is a game changer, John. Uh, you know, a lot of servers, if you ask them what they sell, they'll identify the entree that their restaurant is famous for. I'm here to tell you, if, if you want to make more money in our business, you're not here to sell entrees. You know who sells entrees? Guests. If a guest walks into the restaurant at noon, they have sold themselves lunch entree. If they walk in at 5.30, they have sold themselves a dinner entree. It's not your job to sell entrees. It is your job to guide them into the one that's going to make them happy and have a great experience and that they're going to enjoy. Ask questions and detail that recommendation. But you're here to, put your, to focus your sales energy on incrementals. That means the things that get added to that entree. Add-on sales, incremental sales, soups, salads, appetizers, premium uh, beverages, and desserts. That's what makes you money in this business. And if you can get great at selling those things, you can make more money. The best way to sell them is to create desire by a visual cue. Absolutely. And, and, and back to the entrees, there's very little upside to uh, recommending a different entree. Uh, first of all, uh, it's the highest ticket item that the guest is going to be ordering. Their expectations are going to be that much higher. Uh, and and the, the, the difference in upselling a, a $30 dish to a $34 dish 
there's not much benefit, but the stakes are much higher because now the guest, that's the focus of their meal, and, and you're on the hook if, if the expectation is slightly less than what you would have yeah. explained at the day. If you wait for a guest to decide on an entree and then move them into a more expensive entree, their expectation level goes up. And I'll tell you what, that's when you start seeing things go back to the kitchen. I have never seen a dessert returned to the kitchen, right? Focus your sales energy, you know, get them into the right entree, make recommendations that you think that they'll enjoy, but that small move up or down in entree is not going to be what makes you a whole ton more money. What's going to make you more money is getting great at selling a bottle of wine, a couple desserts, an appetizer for the group, and soups and salads on every entree. That's the stuff that makes outstanding renegade servers exponentially more money. Entrees pay the rent. Incrementals pay for shoes and tropical vacations. Absolutely. And, and regarding uh, you know desserts, I mean, you're getting the guests when they're hungry, when they don't have food coma because they've already had appetizers, entrees, and they're ready to explore. You're getting them right when their eyes are wide and open. It's like going to the supermarket when you're hungry. It is. You put a great looking dessert on there, and, and after you get the entree order, you simply point and make a simple suggestion. Have you tried this cheesecake? It is awesome. Can I put one aside for you? That's it. And, and you're not only going to sell that cheesecake, but the, the, the coffee, the beverages, yeah, everything absolutely goes with it. Absolutely right. So the way a lot of servers sell dessert is they wait for everybody be, to be done with their big meal, and then they come up to the table and say, did anybody save room for dessert? It's a terrible way to sell dessert. First of all, your question alone prompts the answer no. Second of all, they're using neuro-linguistic programming to program the answer no. They don't even mention a dessert. All they ask is if anybody saved room. And guess what? Nobody does that. If you want to create desire, you have to use visible cues. We've done research that shows that high-end restaurants that take a, a cart or a tray of desserts to the table that says, look at the gooey deliciousness of this dessert, makes it impossible to resist. They sell twice as many desserts. That's what every server can do with a waiter wand, is not only now I can bring it to you and say, look at the gooey deliciousness of this dessert, but I can do this before they eat that big entree. Absolutely, which is a huge difference. It is. Absolutely. Uh, no, it's, it's a great point. And then regarding appetizers, there's a significant opportunity between when a drink order is taken and when, we, when the guest is ready to order an entree that you can put a appetizer uh, point of purchase in here and, and, and have great results. That's absolutely right. You know, when I, I, I speak to thousands of servers every year and many of them say, I'd like to have more tables in my section, or I sometimes don't sell as much as I'd like or recommend as much as I'd like because I'm concerned about timing and getting more turns on the tables, which is a valid thing. However, what I see behaviorally from them is when they come up to an undecided table for entrees, they say, have you decided what you'd like to eat? And the table says no, and what does the server do? Oh, yeah, why don't I just give you a few minutes? So I'm worried about how many turns I get and I'm giving away my time. What they should do with an undecided guest is to say, listen, I see you haven't picked up your menus yet, and I want you to take your time and I'll tell you exactly what to have. In the meantime, I don't want you to be hungry. Why don't I bring you one of our famous Chipotle chicken nachos as a centerpiece for your table, and you can pick at it while you decide what you'd like to eat. Essentially, what I'm doing is putting food on this table during every visit, because if all I'm doing is escaping the table and giving you time, I'm taking that time away from myself, because now it takes me two trips to this table instead of one. I'm doubling the amount of time it takes to serve you, which means I'm cutting in half the number of tables I can serve to you. Absolutely. An another tip is have servers practice a pre-shift their presentation to guests. Not only will that inspire and help other servers and give them ideas or food for thought, but it gets them more comfortable. At, uh... Absolutely. What, what I would do as a manager is to have, have one of these LTO cards, full color, delicious looking, ready for all of the incrementals that I want to sell. Soups, salads, appetizers, premium beverages, and desserts, and have a deck of them. And let the servers decide which one they're going to sell. And then in the pre-shift, make them commit and say, I see you've got the chocolate cake in your LTO today. What do you have to say about it? Let them practice describing it to the guests. And maybe what they'll do is inspire some other servers in that meeting. And then say, great, how many can you sell? Absolutely. No, absolutely. Great, uh, great tips. And, and I think all of this... Uh, is, is going to be really helpful in you implementing the way to wild at your restaurants. Thank you, Tim, for uh, helping us guide through this process and, uh, and happy waiting tables.